Actually, Jamie, before you respond and some uh, really great points, Kent, I, I think with what you're saying, Jamie, you would have to then make, if you notice here in Daniel 9, 25 to 26, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Beautiful pro uh, prophecy of, of Jesus Christ, obviously dying for us, right? The sins of the world. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Right. So now we have a focus on the people of the prince. Some would say that that was Emperor Titus uh, when he came and uh, d destroyed the temple. And the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant. So the antecedent to the he is this prince here, which would, would at that time, you know, the shadow fulfillment be Emperor Titus. But end times wise dual prophecy fulfillment would be the antichrist and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week so if i'm understanding you correctly jamie are you saying that this he is jesus yeah i'm suggesting that otherwise you have jesus bringing the new covenant outside of the 70 weeks because it, he, does, he gets cut off after it and if you don't have the 70th week starting yet then he's outside of the 70 weeks and i'll just the only other point i'll make to that is just if you look at luke 3 really carefully um well, actually, there's two real quick points, but it just it says in John, in the chapter 15, or Luke 3, verse 15, it says, and as the people were in expectation, and it's regarding the Messiah, they think John is the Messiah. And so I would say they seem to think or be expecting Messiah the year Jesus starts his ministry. And I would say that would be perfectly on board with, uh, you know, the timeline for the 70th week to start right at his baptism. <laughs> And then he, well, Jamie, Jesus. if I could ask you a real quick question, sure. because sure. notice this, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice in the oblation to cease. So who's the he that's causing the sacrifice in the oblation to cease? Uh, that would be Jesus bringing an end to uh, animal sacrifices. Okay, well, wait a minute. What about Daniel 8, 9, 1, where it's talking about the little horn, the Antichrist? And notice here it says, and yeah. by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away. So I think that's future. Okay, so, so so wait a minute. You would agree that this is the Antichrist taking away yes. the daily sacrifice in Daniel 8, mm -hmm. but yeah. then you go right up to Daniel 9, and now suddenly the one that's uh, removing the sacrifice is now Jesus? Well, no, I mean, there's, there, there, there is though. overlap, but I I'm going to say that um, this is the only time-sensitive prophecy that would mark them to be expected expecting the messiah and then i'd point to john 5 where it says the witness in the earth is the water the spirit and the blood which sounds a lot like his baptism and his death but well, but i mean it's our only verse that it, that has jesus confirming the covenant and well here's the thing confirming a covenant is just talking about an agreement you know an, an illegal agreement on something as kent was pointed out this could be you know the signing of a treaty or something like that but we have uh daniel 8 and then kent i'd like to get your thoughts on this before we get to the next person we have daniel 8 that's making it clear that the little horn who's the antichrist you know he he's the one that's uh getting rid of of the daily sacrifice and then right in uh daniel 9 where we have um pull it right here we have the, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and then right in verse 27 and he who's the he well it's the antecedent he shall confirm the covenant and it is he that causes the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he again talking about you know emperor titus at that time but uh, the antichrist in the future shall make it desolate so i see no justification to say that daniel 8 where it talks about in verse 11 yea he magnified himself talking about the little horn the antichrist even to the prince of the host and by him referring to the anti antichrist the daily sacrifice was taken away okay so obviously it's the antichrist taking away the daily sacrifice and not uh jesus but i, I do want to of course get kent in on this and any thoughts brother well and the same thing when you read the passages in matthew mark and luke Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, they asked him, Lord, when are you coming and what's the sign? He goes through, uh, I should put my slides up here. He goes through 19 verses in Matthew about, I'm coming back, you know, the tribulation time. Uh, right here, slide number 190, Alt DV, 190. So in the middle of that passage, if you look down to verse number 15, Matthew 24, 15, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, let him understand. When you see the same thing in the middle of the passage, I got it outlined in yellow on my uh, chart here. 
uh, in, Matthew, in Mark uh, 4, 13, 14, and when you shall see the des des abomination of desolation. So it mentions the desolation in all three of these passages right in the middle of the 70, of the, of the tribulation description. He's describing the tribulation for, 19, for 21 verse, 23 verses in Matthew. In the middle, it describes the abomination of desolation. So I think this is the same event right here, the breaking of the treaty. And at the end of the, each of these passages, he says, I'm coming after the tribulation when the sun and the moon go dark. I don't think it could be more clear. So many people have these wild theories and they try to muddy the water so bad you can't see what's going on. You know, they pick a verse here and a verse there and try to glue them together. Uh, read the Matthew passage. He answers their question. Lord, when are you coming? What's the sign? He talks about it for 20 some verses. and says, I'm coming after the tribulation when the sun and the moon go dark. So I don't think there's any need to muddy the water anymore. It's, it's pretty clear from those three. And when you take that as your basis and look at all the other verses, they all match, they, they blend right in. Uh, I don't, I've not, it, it was a great relief to me to say, wow, I better change my doctrine. He's coming after the tribulation. I was confusing tribulation and wrath. They're not the same. I was confusing day of Christ and day of the Lord. They're not the same. You get those four, four doctrines straight, it's like, oh, it all makes sense. But anyway, here it is at the bottom of each of these, the abomination of desolation. So that takes place in the middle of the tribulation. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, so I, I get that. And I'm, I'm with you on Matthew 24. I'm with you on a future Antichrist. I just think because of what's, a, so the immediate context of Daniel 9, 24 through 927, which is the angel telling him what's up, I would say, this, if you look carefully at the six things that are listed in Daniel 9, 24, those are things Jesus is to accomplish. And they're said to have to be accomplished in the 70 weeks. If you detach the 70th week from starting right after the 69th and cast it into the future, Jesus being cut off after the 69th week would put him outside of the 70 weeks, which the things that need to be accomplished in Daniel 9, 24 are within the 70 weeks. And then you put his death outside of that a time period when you put a break in there. And the New Testament, if you do a word study on the things that must be fulfilled, you'll find that the New Testament writers are, are clearly quoting uh, that Jesus fulfilled those things and they had to be done in the 70 weeks. And I'd also say other messianic passages are highly correlated with those six things, like, like Isaiah 53, Isaiah 42, Jeremiah 31. Just something to consider. Okay. Okay, Jamie. Yep. Let me throw one more, uh, one more something into the recipe here while we cook this thing. Uh, Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Matthew nineteen four, Mark ten six. Yeah, Adam wasn't made till day six, so he's talking about a, the, the beginning, the first week of creation. So Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning when actually it was on day six. So he got the oh, same I thing. I love that argument. I agree that, with that's you. I think that's grasping at straws. Yeah, and, and and I would agree as well when it comes to uh, the he there uh, being interpreted as, as as Jesus, because again, you just compare scripture to scripture, Daniel eight nine to eleven. I'll, I'll just say this one final thing, Jamie, and then I appreciate you being here. I I've compared it here for, to make it easy for everybody. Who is the he comparison? Daniel eight nine to eleven, and out of one of them came forth a little horn. OK, yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him, the Antichrist, not Jesus, the daily sacrifice was taken away. Daniel 9, 17. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So I, I think it's it's kind of grasping. It, it's grasping at straws to say, well, Daniel 8 is talking about the Antichrist. But Daniel 9 is talking about Jesus. It's the same thing. It's, it's somebody that's taking away the, the, the daily sacrifice. So, you know, to say this the 70th week has been fulfilled, I, I don't think is um, is feasible. But... That's it!